Hey, what's up? It's GC Kinsey, and this is my Beetlejuice makeup tutorial. Before I jump in, I just want to point out that although this tutorial is only 18 minutes long, the makeup itself is not. It takes me about two and a half hours to apply and one hour to remove it. At cons, I budget four hours total to get into Beetlejuice, including makeup, costume, and snack or restroom breaks. That's because eating and using the restroom are difficult, if not impossible, with your hands and teeth painted, though you can drink through a straw. So plan your day accordingly when you wear this. I'm starting by taking some Prosade and using a Q-tip to dab a light thin layer all along my hairline down to my jaw on each side. And this is going to be what helps hold my wig in place. There are other adhesives you can use like liquid latex or spirit gum, but Prosade is just my favorite. So once this is applied and dried, I'm gonna take my wig, pull it on, start adjusting it, and then start laying it down into that layer of prosade that I just applied. The way I built this wig was on a bald cap, so I used that to create Beetlejuice's receding hairline, and then I took some liquid latex and just applied layers upon layers of hair to the wig until it was fully covered, and then finally I cut and styled it into the right shape and painted it for the final wig that you see today. So once all of those edges are laid down, your wig will be held nicely in place. You'll notice there is a gap here where you can still see my hair. That's because I've worn this wig multiple times and the edge gets worn out more and more with each time. But no worries because for today's shoot, I'm gonna have my hat on and it's gonna cover that right up. Next, I'm gonna take some liquid latex, pour a little bit into a cup for easier application. And I'm gonna take a Q-tip and start dabbing on a layer of moderate thickness to help cover the edge between the bald cap and where it meets my skin. And you'll probably wanna do two or three coats of this with each one getting a little bit thinner just to help blend out that edge. And you'll wanna let each coat dry in between before you apply your next one and let your final coat dry before you move on to any further steps in the makeup. Now I'm taking a Miron Cream Blend Stick in white, and I'm gonna use that to lay down my foundation. Cream foundation is just a personal preference for me. You can use whatever kind you want, whether it is water-based, alcohol-based, cream-based, whatever. I just like this best, because it does the best with my skin type. So now I'm taking a sponge, and I'm actually applying a little bit more of that cream to the sponge itself, as I blend out what's already on my face for a very nice full coverage. This makeup does go all over the face and also all the way down the jaw and the neck because you'll see that neckline exposed in the costume that I'm wearing. Once that's done, we're gonna set it. I just took some baby powder and put it into an old makeup container. You can use a legit theatrical setting powder if you would like. I am just cheap and lazy. All that matters is that it is in a shade of white that will match your foundation. Next, I'm gonna take some NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder. This is in more of a beige tone, so a little darker than that white, and I'm using this to create the illusion of a five o'clock shadow on the lower part of my face. So this gives just a little bit of contrast to that white foundation and powder that we laid down before. Once that's done, I'm gonna take the brush I used before that has my baby powder on it and just blend that a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm taking a Ben Nye cream color palette in black and I'm going to use this to do the eyes. So I'm just blocking out the shape first with a Q-tip and a thin layer of that black cream foundation. And I do like to keep a reference photo nearby that I can take a look at just to make sure I'm getting the shape as close to screen accurate as I can. I like to block out that shape on both eyes first before I start filling it in. And that just makes it easier to make any adjustments or fixes I need to before I get too much of that color laid down. So now I'm filling it in. And I'm doing this pretty lightly. I'm not putting a very heavy layer. It's kind of appearing as more of a dark gray than a true black, which is absolutely fine. That's what we want. So filling it in, first one side and then the other. And now our basic shape is done. And if you need to clean up those edges at all, you can just take your sponge, some more of your white theatrical foundation, and just dab at it a little bit. What's nice about cream foundations is that if you make a mistake, it is very easy to fix that just by covering it up with some more. Next, I'm gonna set this and I'm starting with a beauty control eyeshadow palette and grabbing this brown shade. And I'm just gonna take a little bit on a small brush and lightly tap it all over that entire eye area that we just put our black cream foundation on. Not only does this help to set that foundation because this is a powder-based eyeshadow, but it's also adding some nice warmth and richness to that color. And if you look at any reference photos from the film, you will be able to see that rather than a true black, the eyes do have a little bit more warmth to them. So this really helps bring that out. I'm doing another pass using a Maybelline eyeshadow palette and these two shades of purple, which will just add yet another layer of richness to this makeup. Now I'm gonna take more of that NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder that we use for the five o'clock shadow and using a large brush, just dab it all over the whole eye area to lighten that up from kind of a darker black to more of a gray tone shade. Blending it out a little bit and then cleaning up the edges as needed with more of that theatrical foundation on my sponge. Next, I'm taking a NYX eyeliner pencil in white, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on my waterline. That's because Beetlejuice tends to have these very big bug eyes in a lot of the photos that I do. And this kind of helps enhance that so I don't have to hold my own eyes open quite as wide. And I'm gonna complete the eyes with some Maybelline Great Lash Mascara in black. This is mostly just to make sure that if there's any of that white powder on my lashes, it gets covered up so that they blend better into that darker background that's surrounding my eyes. Now I'm taking a NYX eyeliner pencil in charcoal gray. And this is the fun part because this is where I get to block out the areas where there is moss growing on Beetlejuice's face. It doesn't really matter what color eyeliner you use for this. Just take a pencil and kind of put it on very lightly as a guide so that you know where your moss is going to go. And again, this is where it can be really helpful to have a reference photo nearby, just so that you can get the placement as screen accurate as you would like it to be. Now 
now that I'm done marking that out, I'm getting my prosade back out and taking a Q-tip and dabbing a light layer on over these areas I blocked out. I like to do two or three, maybe four areas at a time so that the first area can be drying while I dab prosade onto the other areas. And then by the time I'm done with that kind of set of areas, I'm ready to start laying moss down into the first area that has already become tacky dry. So in this case, I'm just starting with the sort of moss mustache that surrounds my mouth. Once that is set, I'm just taking some crap store moss that I've broken up into small pieces and put into a bowl for easier application. And here I've zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing better, but once the prosade has gotten to a tacky dry point, I'm just taking those small pieces of moss and laying them right down into that prosade. It'll stick right on your face and you can see now why it doesn't really matter what color eyeliner you use because the moss is thick enough to cover all of that up. So I'm just going to continue this process all over the rest of my face and neck. This is by far the most time consuming part of the Beetlejuice makeup, but it's also the most fun. You'll notice there's already moss along the hairline of the wig. That was applied the very first time I wore it. So if this is your first time wearing your wig, you will need to build in some extra time in your application process to add that moss, but it will be there every time you wear it after. And at this point, you can see I've applied most of it to my face and I'm now moving down to finish my neck. So I'm just putting on the finishing touches and there we have our finished moss. Next up is the teeth and I did forget to shoot this but this is what it looks like. It is Ben Nye tooth color in the shade Zombie Rot which is a lovely green. And I'm going to prep the surfaces of my teeth by drying them off with a cotton ball first. You want them to be as dry as possible before you start to brush on the paint. So I'm just going to start brushing it onto the surfaces of my teeth. And then I'm going to take a Q-tip and sort of thin out the middle parts of the teeth so it looks like it's darker along the edges at my gum line. And I'm going to continue that process for all the rest of my teeth. You don't have to do them all, just the ones that show. This paint actually tastes like mint, so it's not at all unpleasant to apply. And it comes off very easily by brushing your teeth or even just eating. So that's why I don't eat after I put this on. Once the top layer is laid down, I'm going to repeat that same process with my bottom teeth. And it can be a little bit trickier on your bottom teeth because you tend to kind of produce more saliva in that pocket between your gum and your lower lip. So you may have to keep drying that area out with q-tips or cotton balls and do more than one coat to get everything painted and you can kind of see me doing that here but just be patient take your time and eventually you will get everything painted once this dries you can talk normally and drink through a straw without chipping it off and there we have our finished teeth 
Next step is nails, and this is a custom set of nails that I shaped and painted with acrylic paint. And I'm using a tiny dab of Loctite super glue gel to hold that in place. Less is more because it makes for easier removal later. You can use regular nail glue for this, but this is what I had lying around and it's basically the same. So I'm going to press and hold that for about 30 seconds to get it set. So there is our first nail. And once that's done, I'm just going to repeat the process on all of my other ones. And now that my nails are done, I'm going to get my costume on and then move on to painting my hands. So I'm using that same Maron cream blend stick in white that I use for my face, taking a sponge, applying it all over the hands and wrists on both sides, and then setting it with that baby powder. Then I'm going to take some Prosade, dab a little bit onto the back of my hand so that I can lay down some moss for a finishing touch. And this is why I said it's difficult, if not impossible, to use the restroom in this costume because when you wash your hands, that moss is going to start flaking off. So I'm laying down a section of moss onto the back of each hand, popping on my ring, and now my hands are done. So there you have it, the finished makeup look. If you have any questions about any part of my application process, please feel free to leave me a comment down below or contact me on other social media. I am GC Kinsey across all platforms. While you're here, feel free to check out any of my other videos and like and subscribe so you don't miss anything new. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you on the next one.